Hey everybody, CW here, Card Wolf, because I am always on the hunt for great cards. And today we will be hunting through a uh, box that I just got, which is a small collection I purchased of uh, baseball cards. These are some uh, vintage cards. Not a very big collection. I think it's only, I don't know, it's less than 100 cards. I know that. It was listed as the uh, small childhood collection of the uh, seller. And... Uh, those of you who watched a previous video of mine know that I have a penchant for a certain card from 1973 Topps Baseball, and that's what most of this is, is 1973 Topps Baseball. So uh, this is some vintage stuff. I've been looking forward to getting into this, and uh, we're going to do that today. But first I have a confession to make to you guys. The confession is that there is not going to be an unsophisticated card wolf video. I was going to do one in response to the sophisticated card wolf video I did a few days ago that I thought would probably lose most of my subscribers when they saw that, but people actually seem to like it. So as I, I said then, I think uh, sophisticated card wolf will make a return. And I thought to balance that I would do unsophisticated card wolf. And so I shot a video for that and it was terrible. It was just a total embarrassment. Uh, one of my takeaways from that, it really wasn't that different from what I always do. So I think I already am unsophisticated card wolf. I think that's just what you get all the time on the channel. So exaggerating that and making it worse was just awful. So uh, it, it's just, yeah, I've already deleted it. It's not going to be available even on the uh, B side of the card wolf album or in the extra bonus features on the card wolf uh, DVD. It's, it's just not going to be available. Um, it was kind of like one of those uh, Saturday Night Live sketches where it's funny for like the first 15 seconds and then it just goes on for like 5 or 10 minutes after that, just burning your eyeballs out and you just want it to end. It was exactly like that, in fact. So anyway, that's not going to happen, but you will see Sophisticated Card Wolf return at some point. And if I can think of some way to do Unsophisticated Card Wolf that isn't a complete affront to all that is YouTube then maybe I'll try it at some point in the future, but I, I could not figure out a way to do that. That wasn't awful. So anyway, sorry about that, and I hope that uh, that isn't too big of a disappointment to anyone. I can't imagine that it would be. Um, so anyway, the card that uh, is in here for sure in this collection is this card that I have showed you on the channel before. It's a card that I am uh, always kind of keeping an eye out for and collecting. It's Aaron, Ruth, and Maze. And uh, if you go back and watch that video, you'll you'll get more information as to why I think that's a, a great card to pick up, and it's still fairly affordable, too. So uh, go back and check out that video if you haven't already. For right now, we're going to get uh, Mr. Kershaw to help us open up this collection of 1973 Topps Baseball. And then he really did a great job taping this up and... Uh, packaging it. So yeah, he really did package it nicely. Wow, there's a lot of bubble wrap. As always, practice good knife safety and keep those blades out of the reach of small children and little wolves. So let's see what we have in here. It looks like a lot of bubble wrap, which is nice, and uh, more and more uh, padding in here. That's great. And I see something that I did not... Yeah, okay, down here are the 73s. This was not in the listing, whatever this pack of cards is. So that's a surprise. We're going to put that to the side for right now and have a look at that. Uh, that was not a part of the listing. Those must be bonus cards. Let me uh, pull these out. As you can see, these are were kept in pages. There's nothing else in the box, so that's going to go away. And uh, we've got these here. I don't know what's in this. Uh, oh, actually, I can guess what's in that envelope. He had pulled two... Uh, Hall of Famer cards out and was featuring those as like the main draw uh, of this lot. And uh, they're good cards, certainly, but that wasn't the main draw for me. They're, they're nice cards and I'll probably keep them, but uh, the main draw for me was that uh, Aaron Ruth Maze card, which is in there somewhere. First, I want to see what's in this, this bonus bag of cards that were not in his uh, listing. I'm very curious to see what he gave us, and I keep bumping the camera, for which I'm very sorry. Gino Petrali, uh, whoa, whoa, lots of Gino, oh, okay, these, these must just be some modern cards that he, uh, strangely had, uh, a lot of copies of. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of Jamie Moyer and some Kenny Rogers, I wonder if that's a rookie. Uh, it doesn't look like it. These are, uh, 91 score, I believe, yeah, they are. 
and that's not 91 score. I think that's uh, 2006 tops, if I'm remembering the... Yes, it is. So 2006 tops is also in here. These are not duplicates. There's another Kenny Rogers. He must have been a fan, perhaps. Garrett Anderson, not a bad card there. Uh, BJ Ryan. All right, all right. Let's see. Pokey Reese. Okay. So, and now we go... <laughs> Even something else here. These are in sleeves, actually. And Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so all of this back here is stickers. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. I can always uh, give out the stickers in uh, giveaways that I do. That one is, is no good anymore. All right, let's put that one over there and see what else is left in here. Some hologram cards, too, it looks like. Yeah, these are all the uh, hologram inserts. That's kind of neat, too. And then these are uh, all in uh, sleeves. So... Some bonus cards. I guess he just had those uh, lying around and uh, wasn't doing anything with them, so he decided to include them. I'll have to leave him uh, a nice comment and thank him. It's always nice when people include bonus cards. You know, they, those were not uh, anything stellar, but nonetheless, it's really, really nice when people do that when you buy something online from them. So uh, I definitely want to make sure I thank him for those. All right, so on to what I actually purchased here. Let's see what's in this uh, padded mailer that he uh, has in here. I'm pretty sure it's the two Hall of Famers that he was featuring. Oh yeah, and some more bonus cards. I, I did not see this in there. This uh, is uh, one of the worst condition cards I have ever received in the mail, and John Roseboro is not much better. Wow, those are those are terrible. Uh, there's the... these are the two Hall of... and then more bonus cards. It looks like he has two Jim Rice Kellogg's cards. Now these, I think, were from 91, maybe? Or 92? What is this? Uh, 92, okay. So uh, one's still in the wrapper. That's pretty cool. And then the other one is out of the wrapper. Uh, so that's all right. Jim Rice is a Hall of Famer, and, and I'm I'm not sure I still... I used to collect Kellogg's cards when they were coming out, and I'm not sure I, I really followed through on that year. I, I was more into the 1970s Kellogg's cards, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, Hall of Famer. Can't beat that. So here are the two Hall of Fame cards that the seller did highlight, and as you can see, they are definitely worth highlighting. Am I getting a good focus here? I don't think I am. Man, this camera. I've, I've got to do something. If any of you have a, a good camera recommendation for me for the channel, I would certainly appreciate it, because this one is vexing me, let me tell you. So Kari Ostremski, Hank Aaron, these are both nice cards. Uh, you can see the Yaz is a little weirdly off-center there. Uh, but the Hank Aaron is nice. He's he's a little thick on the right side, but not too bad. And then uh, the other side of these, uh, not bad cards. Uh, apparently, Kari Ostremski was the director of a bank. I did not know that. So anyway, those were the two that he really highlighted, and I'm certainly happy to get them, and they're, they're pretty decent cards. I have no complaints about that by any means. But uh, there was some other stuff in here that I was more interested in. Let's see what we can find in here. And the thing I would say, you know, I would like you to pay attention to is the condition of these cards. These, uh, most of these cards have pretty nice corners and pretty nice edges. Uh, many of them are very well centered, which is hard to find for 1973 tops. Uh, there's an early Greg Lazinski card. He was a power hitter in the 70s. George Hendrick had a, a really great career with the Cardinals, as I recall. Uh, it looks like he may have jammed extra cards behind these. I'm just going to check that real quick. Yeah, there's a duplicate of Carlos May, and it looks like there might be another one of Mr. George Hendrick. Yeah, there is. So that's kind of neat. That's more cards than I had expected. And then there are cards on the back of all of these pages as well. At the top, you see some World Series cards, and uh, looks like a playoff card. And then uh, some common cards down there. And then uh, we'll go to the next sheet. I think there are four or five of these sheets, if I remember right. There's an Earl Weaver right at the top there, Hall of Fame manager and longtime manager of the Orioles. So if you watch the channel, you know I collect Orioles. That's a nice card to pick up. All right, let's see. Uh, there's a nice Milwaukee Brewers team card. Pretty neat. And then the rest of these are commons. Try not to get so much glare there, Card Wolf. I think you can do better than that. And there's a Don Buford at the top and another Earl Weaver. That's pretty neat. So I'll pull those out and uh, pick the one I like best and then uh, put the other one away. The Don Buford's a nice one as well. And there's a George Scott right in the middle. That's a sweet looking card. I always used to like uh, Boomer was his nickname, Boomer Scott. He was a big guy, played first base, really good power hitter, but he was also really athletic. He could really move really well on the field. And there's another team card of the 
Cardinals, some of these older team cards do uh, go for something and they can be in high demand. So that's that's a pretty neat page. I like that one. And this page has, uh, looks like it has a couple of 1968 cards on it. There's a Ron Swoboda at the top and an Orioles catcher, Larry Haney, there at the bottom. Uh, so that's kind of neat to find those. And down here, it looks like he's got some, uh, some Hostess cards. Now these cards were in a panel on the back panel of... Uh, snack cakes that came and you had to cut them out yourself and it looks like he cut them out with a rusted pair of children's scissors by the looks of the way that these were cut which is okay none of these guys are big stars now wilbur wood was a star pitcher in the uh, mid 70s for a little while he was such a good pitcher in fact that he was on the cover of sports illustrated once just him not like all oh, the white Sox are doing really well it was like wilbur wood is the bomb and so they put him on the cover which was pretty cool well, what else we have here we've got the 1972 leading fireman. Most of you do not know what that means. Back then, uh, instead of having like a saves leader or relief pitcher of the year award, they had what they called the leading fireman award, and that was for the best relief pitcher. But the way they calculated it wasn't just who has the most saves. It was this uh, very complicated mathematical formula, as I remember it, and I could never figure out how they decided who was the fireman of the year award. They gave points for different things that they did, and it involved a lot of math. And if you've ever watched my channel, you know I am not a math wizard. So I was always confused by that. Uh, I, I looked, it appears as though Clay Carroll was also very confused by that as well. And I think he's he's smarting from having lost to Sparky Lyle by just one point. And uh, Clay Carroll, you know, I would be suspicious about that, too. That math never made sense to me. Sparky Lyle looks really quite self-satisfied at having won the Fireman of the Year award. So uh, that's kind of a cool card. I like those awards cards. And then on the back here, oh, there is there is the full Clay Carroll card right there. And if anything, he looks more mystified and confused as to how that could have happened. It was unjustly awarded to Sparky Lyle. And Clay Carroll is... Uh, He's questioning that, to say the least. I gotta tell you, Clay, I look, or you look, the way that I feel. I feel that way probably like three times a day, at least. I think this Clay Carroll card, this is a masterpiece of baseball card art there. I really like that one. I don't remember seeing that one before. I'm sure I did, but I've forgotten. That one is going to make a reappearance on the channel. I think I'm just going to keep that one handy and pull that one out and uh, use that to express how I feel about something sometimes. Or maybe I'll just keep it in my wallet and pull it out like if I'm at the grocery store. How does this cost that much? And just pull out the Clay Carroll card and the cashiers will look at me as though I am crazy and they would not be wrong. So what do we have here? It looks like a Don Zimmer card up there. Let's check that one out. Don Zimmer, a uh, longtime manager and coach. He looks like he's about ready to punch somebody in the mouth, which was the standard Don Zimmer expression. Uh, Don, interesting story about Don Zimmer. And most of you will not care about this, so you can press the skip forward button if you want to. Don Zimmer, when I think it was in, uh, boy, I can't remember now, I think it was in like 57 or so when Don Zimmer was uh, still in the minors, he got uh, hit in the head by a pitcher when he was at bat. And the result of that was that people started wearing batting helmets. And so thanks to Don Zimmer, batting helmets came about. And then decades later, he was sitting in the dugout as a coach. This was in like 93 or something. And uh, he got hit in the head again by a foul ball that came tearing into the dugout. And as a result of that, it became pretty standard in the major leagues to put up those uh, fences in front of the dugout, the chain link fences that they use right now with that metal to deflect any balls that come zipping into the dugout. So thanks to Don Zimmer, players are, are a lot safer today. It's a little known story about him, about him getting hit in the head a lot which might explain some things about Don Zimmer. No offense to Don Zimmer there. Buddy Bell, uh, trophy card. I don't think that's his actual rookie. And then there's the one that I bought this for, the uh, Ruth Aaron Mays card, and that looks nice, I have to say. That that has some nice centering there. That is, that is a really nicely centered card, but I would give dollars to donuts, as they used to say when I was a lad, that the back of this card is going to be off-center. They always, always are. Now, obviously, I haven't seen the back of this card. It's got uh, Al Oliver back there, and that's cool. So we're going to have to take that out and check that. But let's see who's on the back of this sheet. This has got some good stuff back here, actually. This is a nice-looking, uh, some nice-looking cards back here. There's a Harmon Killebrew. He's a Hall of Famer. Thurman Munson, not a Hall of Famer, but a great catcher. Looks like he's got two Pittsburgh Pirates team cards jammed in there. There's an early... 
Al Oliver card, real slugger from the 70s, Larry Boa, great all-star shortstop, and Kenny Singleton, who played for the Orioles for a while. All right, so let's get this, uh, carefully extract this uh, card out of here and uh, see if I win the bet with myself. This is a really nice card, too. This does not feel like it has any wear on it. That's a nice card. Yeah, it is, it is off-center on the back, as I predicted. I'm not sure that's getting the, the focus the way I want. There you go. You can see that it's, it's always thin on this side and, and thick over there on the left side. That's always the way this card looks. Uh, I bet this one that I showed you earlier looks that way. Yes, it does, and uh, I think all of the ones I have look that way. It's very, very rare to find one that is centered properly on the back. It's unusual to find one that's centered so nicely on the front, so that's a pretty good pickup. I'm going to set that one aside for sure, but uh, this is a, I feel good about this purchase. These cards are in really, really nice shape for the most part, and uh, there's uh, several of these where there are clearly duplicates that he jammed in here. So that's pretty neat. I feel good about this. Uh, I paid about $70 for this lot, which for good condition cards from 1973 is pretty good. Plus there were three Hall of Famers, I believe. There was Aaron and Yastrzemski over here. There was ha Harmon Killebrew on the back page. Oh, and then there's uh, Earl Weaver. Forgot about that. So four Hall of Famers and some other stars that I uh, feel pretty good about. And of course the uh, Ruth Aaron Mays card. It has a little little issue with the uh, centering and uh, overall though I think it's a pretty good one. I'll have to compare all of those at some point so I can pick the one that I think is best so far in my collection and then any more that I bring in I can compare against that and, and soon my empire of 1973 all-time home run leaders cards will be complete and I'll be making uh, igloos out of them and, and hills for me to uh, ski down out of just those cards. It'll be like I'm in the Fairfield family. If any of you uh, know what I think of the Fairfield boxes and the Fairfield family's empire of, of trading cards. All right, so that's it today. Uh, I really appreciate you tuning into the channel, and uh, as always, happy collecting.